All right, everybody, we are back again. Dinah Samir, Search for Who. We are back to back. We just had the sister Jackie Johnson on with us earlier. And now we have brother, the good brother, Collagen, Collagenis is on with us uh, now, tonight. And tonight's topic is, is it neocolonialism or neo-Negroism? I know when it comes to Africa and when it comes to certain movements being sabotaged in the black community here in America, we like to point the finger to, you know, colonialism, uh, white people, uh, which is pretty much code for colonialism. But let's take Malcolm X, for example. It wasn't white people who killed Malcolm X, it was two brothers. Let's take Patrice Lumumba, let's take Thomas Sankara. It wasn't white people who killed him. It was black people who peeled, pulled the trigger. Let's deal with this destructive Samboism, kill a clown, destructive clownism that's going on today in the community. I know a lot of black people like to say, hey, they're putting dope in the community. You know, you hear the, oh, well, in Chicago, if you go into a random alleyway, there's a crate of guns and you know, that's what's causing all the killing because of the crates of guns that are in, hall, in uh, random alleyways that the CIA or the FBI left in the uh, in these alleyways. So we like to blame everything else instead of just lack of integrity, lack of dignity, not selling out for a Mercedes Benz in a large house. So can we really blame? I mean, don't get me wrong, colonialism. Racism plays a part, but we need to start pointing out how they've repackaged dusty sellout Negroism, and they're trying to put this on us and make it seem okay. Yeah, College Genesis, go ahead. You are you're absolutely yeah. right. You know, because uh, one time, one time one, 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 that, that, let me, let me. Right, go ahead. Okay, you, at one time I bought into the whole idea of a mysterious train. Uh, going into Chicago, dropping off uh, a bunch of drugs and uh, guns and everything. I bought into the Dusty Negro story. Now, there's all kinds of conspiracy theories. Same thing with Los Angeles, there's guns, and we understand all that, this, that, and the other thing. But the whole thing is this, though. How is it that we always let a few, you know what I'm saying, dominate us because we don't have any any sort of fortitude? And it goes to the, the whole thing is this. When you have eminent dominion or p p position over where you are, what you are, and where you are, that can never happen. You know what I'm saying? Because you control ultimately the context of your civilization. Let me give you an example. White people were tested many times in their civilization. You know what I'm saying? Where bandits, pirates, and everything tried to rule and tried to, uh, gangs are trying to take over cities and municipalities and everything, but they had the rule of law on their side. You know what I'm saying? They had the the, the, the civilization on their side. Then they let me give you a perfect example. The uh the, I don't know if you ever read the story of uh, Jesse James, the James Boys in Missouri. Okay. Well let's look at it like that. The James Boys was popular only for, for one reason. Why? Because the majority of people hated the land speculators. They hated the bankers. They hated all this. So that gave context for them to be the Robin Hood, you know, you know the Robin Hood. We're going to rob from the rich people, which are really robbing for themselves. But they made sure not to rob poor people and everything like that. And so they became folk heroes, right? Al Capone became a folk hero for a short period of time, okay? And then they said, okay, you were short, you game suit captain, you, you stuck into the, the big power and everything, you're a hero. But every other civilization have a way of saying, Okay, now it's time to rein you in. You know what I'm saying? You know you're evil. You know you're no good. So we got to rein you in. You had your little thing. John Gotti. Do you know John Gotti was polling at 75% in New York City at one time during his trial? He had higher poll numbers than the mayor. You know what I'm saying? But somehow he went to jail. With black people not being in power or in control or ultimately of the infrastructure and the system, the bad people always rise to the top and stay there. You know what I'm saying? The people always emulate the bad people, and there's no way of coming back because bad seems like it's good because 
we always live in a situation where, well, well if you go against me, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm oppressed. You know what I'm saying? Now, how many drugs I, I sell, how many guns I sell, how many people I sell, I'm oppressed and whatnot. If you go against me, it's hard for black people to do law enforcement. You know what I'm saying? Because you look at the context. Let me do this. look at the sister down in Maryland the, the, uh, the, that tried to prosecute the, the poor police, right? She got a whole city run by criminals and everything, and she has to prosecute police. And at the same time, it looked like uh, she's you know, scared to prosecute criminals because the people are like, why are you prosecuting us? Because we're poor. We're just trying to survive. So you got absolute uh, chaos and lawlessness going on because people are afraid to prosecute people because of the context of their exist existence. You know what I'm saying? Negroism. The reason why that happens is because some people enjoy it. Some people enjoy black oppression because it gets it allows you to get away with things. You know what I'm saying? Allows you to get away with failing schools. Allows you to get away with lawlessness. Allows you to get away with uh, 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 murder. Allows you to get away with selling drugs. Everything because the bottom line is this: because we have never said, you know, something. How do we rise in the world of civilization where we could be dignified? Uh, strong, intelligent, enlightened civil, enlightened people. I always said that you cannot have a situation where you have a black and a white living in the same civilization because one group of people has to be the white people and the other people have to be the black people. B white and black is, is the polar opposites. White by nature is always seen as positive no matter how dirty what they do is positive and black no matter what you do is always seen as negative. You know what I'm saying? So in that negativity, you know what I'm saying? You give sanctuary to uh, crime. We're the only group of people that have a culture that sings about death, destruction, murder, and some of everything, and is seen as normal. Think about that. We're the only group of people that have a culture. The black people in America are the only people that have a culture. You think that's any, 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 any uh, no, because the people that run this country know as long as black people are in a state of chaos, we'll never organize, we'll never have anything. And will never be anything, you know, as neo Negroism. You know, you want to be a Negro. Negro is something a white man created. You know what I'm saying? You're not an African. You're not anything else. You're a Negro because a white man defines your existence. It's like Frankenstein. He took Frankenstein. Doctor Frankenstein took Frankenstein's genius. Uh, uh, he gave him a brain of his own, and he controls him. You know, that's all real science fiction. We're people without a brain that thinks for itself. You know what I'm saying? We watch off to the war. We, we wear the American flag. We do all these things. We don't even know why the hell we do them. You know? We, we, so so that, that's the context of, of why we act the way we do in America. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it goes over to the African continent, unfortunately. You know what I'm saying? I found out, you know, years ago, they did a job on our brothers and sisters in Africa. Anytime an African was educated, and he, most Africans who were educated tended to think in terms of being a national. They saw the world in a pan-African viewpoint, but the Europeans made sure that the uh, they kept up certain uh, institutions, such as the uh, the Federation of Kings and Queens and Chiefs and everything, because they know those type of people work on impulse. You know what I'm saying? That you can buy them off with a nice car, uh, a bank account, and uh, access to the uh, thing, and then showmanship or where they perform at the parliament or whatever. And the bottom line is the people who, the, the, the Africans who are educated, who are either democratic in nature or republican in nature, those people will never rise to power because they want the Africans to be ruled by traditional leaders so they can control, you know? So they, 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 the, the bottom line is this. Uh, many Africans have figured out, figured out, but they, a lot of people don't know is that Africa doesn't need Europe at all to survive. It's the only continent that is completely, be completely self-sufficient if it locked itself off from the rest of the world. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know that. The whole entire African continent and the black race could be completely self-sufficient if it never bought anything or traded anything with another race of people because it has everything on the continent uh, uh, to produce its own and uh, consume its own. Europe needs Africa. Africa doesn't need Europe. But the thing is, there's a relationship that makes Africans into uh, black Frenchmen, black Englishmen, black Portuguese, black Americans. You know what I'm saying? Black Moors. 
what I'm saying? Black Asiatics. <laughs> black Hebrews. <laughs> You're the black of everything you know, that the world uh, uh, sets out before you. You want to be the black of. You're never, you're never in control of your own destiny. You're never in control, define who you are from a vantage point of land, infrastructure, nature, and peace and strength and everything like that to be able to define yourself. But you're always on the, uh, uh, the polarity of another man's culture and another man's manifest destiny. You know? Real quick, Kella, uh, somebody in the chat, shout out to Chief uh, Dr Drino for the uh, support. Thank you, brother. He wants to know, how can we get out of this mess? How can we decolonize our minds? Solutions, Kyla, please. Okay, I, I give yeah, me, me. I give solutions of, and like people and I guess people like to hear my voice. I say land like, infrastructure nationhood. I say until we have that one particular nation that uh one state, nation state, that from the ground up, from the education system, the media, everything is controlled by us. There's no such place on earth that exists. There's no such place on earth that uh, a government or anybody that's controlled by the people and the and the and the and the governing body represents the, the exact people. Every country in Africa is controlled by a uh, uh, military and it works with any interest a foreign interest and, and, and everything. You till you have that one state that is the role model, the role model for other states, the role model state, the model state. For everyone else to emulate, nothing will ever happen. The state that can basically make pan-Africanism in the Constitution as law, that has never happened. Now, Negro neo-Negroism is in the law. You know what I'm saying? Let me give you a perfect example. Up until 20 years ago, do you know you couldn't call from one African country, let alone travel? You couldn't call from a French country to an English country. You couldn't call next door unless... Your phone uh, transmissions went to Europe, right? And European companies disseminate at a high rate back to the African continent. Europeans had, well planned was, have Ivory Coast completely cordoned off from Ghana, you know, carved off from Ghana, that they can't communicate with each other. Nigeria can't kind of communicate with Ghana, you know what I'm saying, through the British and everything, you got different uh, spheres of influence and everything. Uh, French Africa and uh, English Africa completely separated from each other. You had to call to Europe, and Europe controlled everything. 90% of all your calls, 90% of all your trade went through Europe. France, the Ivory Coast was part of France, the French zone. So all the French-speaking countries in the world that France colonized from v Vietnam to uh, 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 countries in the uh, Pacific and everything, they're connected with the Ivory Coast and France. You know what I'm saying? They're part of the French Union. You got the British Commonwealth of Nations. What shocked me was uh, a year after Mandela, was, it, was, it, was, it was like a year after Mandela got out of, oh, wait a minute. No, he came president in 95. Okay, he became president in 1994, right? I was reading uh, 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 in the Shiloh Institute book, and also I saw, and I saw this, right? And I could not believe what I saw, right? And there's uh, was an article that said, uh, the sun never sets on the British Empire. And it had a fresh, it's like a class picture of uh, it had the Queen of England, and it had all the uh, heads of state around the world pictured. You know what I'm saying? See, Mandela was seated in the first row, and then the back row, and then he had a top row. And I said, the sun never set on the British Empire. And I said to myself, this was a revolutionary Nelson Mandela. You know what I'm saying? With the Queen of England, some of the Commonwealth, the, the Commonwealth Nation Club. And he was sitting there smiling, and I'm saying to myself, what the hell? And I didn't, I was at that time, I started digging deeper into Pan Africanism and what Pan Africanism was on. That was 95, but I had a really awakening. You know what I'm saying? I said, wait a minute here. I thought England was the enemy. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was the British that put him in jail. Why is he on a, a class picture? With the Queen of England, you know, sitting out front, and you got all these non white men from Malaysia to whatever, you know, it's like it must have been like uh, 56 nations, 56 nations, you know, all heads of state sitting there, you know, and just cracking uh, buckwheat smiles with, the, uh, with the, uh, the Queen of England. And I'm saying to myself, and then I said to myself, and I underestimated what had happened was I underestimated 
the power and influence of these colonial things. All right, now, look, neocolonialism is, I'm not going to say it's not real. You know what I'm saying? But the bottom line is what I don't understand is the love and affection Africans and black people have for these colonial institutions. That's what I don't understand. I don't understand it. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand how come Africa is not proud of the ancient uh, Zimbabwe and the Shona people and uh, and, uh, and their kingdoms and everything to uh, to build around, and that why they have to be uh, 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 black Englishmen. And then we go around talking about we started civilization. You know, we we started civilization. The black man is God and everything like that. What the hell are you doing in uh, your country of business? Part of the uh, uh, the uh, Commonwealth of Nations. Now, I'm gonna say something. Like I said, I, I, I'm gonna just topic I'm gonna talk about that's gonna be really, really, really deep, right? Really, really deep. But we'll go on and ramble for a little while, right? I'm gonna get to that. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be about. Um, it's gonna be about people. Every because every time when I talk about Liberia, you know what I'm saying? You know, I get to the point where I don't know if I'm making any progress. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, there's so many people that will like the history of Liberia is shockingly unknown. And so I will tell so I'll tell a couple of things. I think with brother Tony Morgan and other people that came on the show and everything, they gave us some insights. Let me tell you something. Let me let me tell you something. Despite being a struggling republic, politically what Liberia wanted to be was the uh, uh, the country of black unity, right? In fact, most of the colonial, uh, the, 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 the revolutionaries, and I can't, I don't, can I even call them revolutionaries anymore after what I just said? Most of the so called, in, let's say, in, le leaders that led the sort of quasi naysaying independence, right? Studied in Liberia, right? It was the only black repub rural republic on the African continent, right? So while the case was being made in Belgium, uh, to uh, excuse me, the Congo by the Belgium, the French, uh, the and the French West Africa by the French. Uh, do you know there was an African king in the early 19th century that developed his own alphabet? Not, I mean, 18th, uh, 20th century, in the 19, uh, tw uh, 19, uh, uh, 19 by 1925. Yeah, they, 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 they destroyed it. Uh, he destroyed it all. Right, 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 right. Now, my point about this is this, though. The, the French and all these other people did all this all around Africa. The whole idea was you just, you, if anytime you try to be educated and modern, you know what I'm saying, we're going to crush you. You got to stay at least three centuries behind us at most. You know what I'm saying? And France is your, your math, your colonial master. Africans, and, and the whole idea was French argued that Africans could never uh, govern themselves outside of Africa because the world's not going to accept them. The world's not going to see your dip uh receive your diplomats and everything it's best that we handle all the outside world for you right but here on the coast of africa right along the guinea gulf of uh the uh, gulf of guinea in the north atlantic there was a little republic called liberia that had a global connection at the time you know what i'm saying that had diplomats in place and the whole idea was the french and all these people was to try to portray liberia even though they were black ass they're not really a, they're not an African republic. They're an American Negro republic. You know what I'm saying? And the term American Liberians was created by outsiders, not 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 the Liberians themselves. They never call themselves American Liberians. I defy anybody to show any me where a Liberian calls themselves American Liberians. That was a term eked on them, right? To make a distinction between the returning Africans who built Liberia and the Africans on the ground, right? So you only uh uh, de Africanize, right? When you do something significant and, and great, they want to de Africanize you. You know what I'm saying? But when you do, when you're a bumbling uh, fool and you mess everything up and you don't know how to, what you're doing, then you're suddenly an African again. You know? Because these people had created a country in Monrovia that was politically as potent as Paris was, right, at the time, you know, had political connections across the globe and everything. And it basically was a magnet. For young revolutionaries like Naomi Ezekiwe of Nigeria, uh, uh, Patrice Lumumba, Nelson Mandela, you know what I'm saying? Kwame Nkrumah, and all these great, and Siko Torre, and all these great African men who came there 
and said, you know, look, yeah, look, look, we got to form one organization that's going to one day free us from colonialism and bridge the gap between brothers and sisters globally on based on what race. You know what I'm saying? Now think about that, right? Because of Liberia, it's like it's like the idea of race. People at that time did not care about tribe at the time. They said we are being enslaved and and called and exploited all because we're black, because the world thinks we're black. And then what the Europeans did was say, look, you know, okay, uh uh we we they had we had to when the independence movement started happening, okay, we'll give you so called independence. You know what I'm saying? Which was never independence. Europeans never gave African independence. They gave you self-rule. You were never independent. You know, you're never independent. So long as their interests are protected on the ground, so long as their their uh, uh, everything stays the way it is, and their money is being secured and their interests being secured, they'll let you have into so-called independence, right? And what does independence mean? That means you have a military, right? And uh, well, we'll give you a line of credit, right, to buy your little toys, to shoot your own people up, and uh, build some schools and some infrastructure projects, and everything. But the main thing is, you know what I'm saying? As long as our money is secured, you can be in power. And that's why you have African leaders that 50 years in power and whatnot. And people don't rise up. Why do people don't rise up? Because it's simple. The, they In Africa, uh, there's never been a revolution from the ground up where people uh, say, okay, this is our country. We're going to build it from the top down. What it usually is, they'll overthrow one set of dictators, right? As a kid. And then negotiate with the floor colonial master to prop them up now you know what I'm saying there's never there's no coup that ever happens right without the behest or the approval of the colonial master in europe and what it looked like in zimbabwe when they were in prison when they imprisoned mugabe it looked like now chinese are in on it, you know what i'm saying because that gentleman that uh president now was in china when that uh that thing happened he was out of the country when the military stormed and uh, uh arrested mugabe you know what i'm saying so it looks like china is not too far above or willing to play this african game you know and then people people like i said most people will respect the rule of law in the democratic process if the africans really wanted it if the black man really wanted it, they would do it but since the world's like this if that's not what i gotta do in africa right if these people just want to uh, be slaves, these people want to be puck pawns and everything, hey, you know, what can I say? And they're just playing the game. So who do we keep blaming? The so-called neocolonialists or the neo-negroists? You know what I'm saying? The neo-negroists is the one that's killing us. These are people that don't think, that the only way they think they can have legitimacy and power if somebody white or somebody else has put them in power. Not because they were democratically elected by the people and they served in the best interest of the people, which Mugabe did. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He was a father of the people. He uh, basically took uh, the country back and everything. And the bottom line, the West hated that. You know, and you had people in Zimbabwe saying, well, the West hates us so much. We're out of the Commonwealth and everything. We got to go back to the white farmers are gone. So we got to bring these people back and everything. Life was good under the white farmers and all the stuff like that. So I don't see, like I said, you, know, you get to the point where. You know, where we want to believe that, you know, that that uh, all Africans are like us and everything like that. But some people, maybe maybe they like being colonized. Maybe they like being a slave. You know, it's, or uh, uh, maybe they like uh, doing that. But that's going to be in conflict with those of us who want to drive the white man out of the continent and build an Afrikan and build all these things in Africa. When I, there's going to be a bloody, bloody coming civil war on the continent. There's two ways of thinking. Those who think like that, think, think, think that the white man's inevitable, the white man's Thanos, and the bottom line is this, uh, uh, if you get out of line with him, that you're, you're cursing Jesus, the white man is Jesus. They, when they see the white man, they, they see Jesus Christ and all this kind of stupid nonsense and everything, and they believe the white man's Santa Claus and, and all these things, and the bottom line is, the African is, uh, is destined to be ruled by the white man indirectly or directly. And then those of us who know, who live in the United States know, the white people really ain't shit, you know what I'm saying? Because we were here when this country was nothing. You know what I'm saying? America would be nothing without the black man here. So, But he projects this idea 
that the white man in America projects his idea that he's so knowing and so powerful, stuff like that. But we had inventors and scientists as long as he has in America. So that's why we have this, these people who, who hate African Americans. This is why we're so cocky. We have this confidence. You know what I'm saying? Because we know our history here. Like your boy was Mike was saying the other night. We know our history. And we're not going to freaking sit here and apologize for what our ancestors accomplished and do. Yeah, given half the opportunity, we'll conquer the world. You know what I'm saying? So the bottom line is that you either roll with us or get rolled over on. As simple as that. What's up, Dinah? <laughs> no, I'm right here. I'm just reading some of the uh, comments in the uh, in the chat room. Oh, what are they saying? Uh, I mean, what's, what's you, know, uh, you know, you got the, oh, he's going to come after Nigerians. You know, a lot of people are saying that. Uh, well, gonna, I was taking it easy on Nigerians. Yeah, you took it easy. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm, I'm mute. I'm taking it easy on Nigerians tonight, you know what I'm saying? Because I know it's kind of hot and explosive and everything. But the bottom line is they got to take their licks too, you know what I'm saying? They got to take their licks too. The bottom line is this. Neo-Negroism. Neo-Negroism. Why is it? I mean, now, nah, let me leave them. <laughs> let me leave them alone. <laughs> let me leave them alone for a little while. You know, before I say something, I'm going to regret. I really mean, but I'm going to regret regret. But the whole thing is, whole thing is this, whole thing is this, whole thing is this. We have people that would rather fight with us, right? Fight with that's a that that that's a Negro, that's a nigga. The first thing they want to do is throw their fist up and fight another black man on any front, right? But I've heard so many times, right? Uh, well, perfect example, perfect, perfect example, right? While I still got my cool. Years I've been in librarian chat rooms and everything like that. And there's one librarian, if he listens to this, he knows who I'm talking about, right? He can't, there's not a white person in America he doesn't love. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know, and he just like, <laughs> he just like you know, uh, he calls me a racist. You know what I'm saying? He calls me a racist. He'll inbox me every holiday and whatnot. He says, I hope you can change your racist ways, you know what I'm saying, and support the repeal. Of, uh, of, uh, of Article 27, I said, no, no, never happened. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, I see, he goes, he goes, I'll tell you right now, the problem is most American Liberians, Congo people, think like you, Congo. You know what I'm saying? And he goes, they think like you. We come over here, I said, look, let me tell you something. You know, uh, I can say his name. You know, the bottom line is this, the bottom line is this. You come over to America, right? You come over to America, and white people treat you nice, right? White people treat you nice. They only treat you nice because you tell them that you're a native librarian. You're a refugee. You know what I'm saying? You're a refugee. You know what I'm saying? You got beef. You tell them your story about the American librarians and stuff like that, and they have a lot of sympathy because the white people in America know how to manipulate uh, uh, this. You know? And uh, I'm going to get back to him in a second. Every time I go around, right, every, all I see is white Americans, they go to every country spreading false information about African Americans. They went to Japan spreading propaganda about uh, black people. Don't, do, don't mess with yourself. There was a Vietnam. Don't mess with these people. Do you know that racist Marines were in Somalia during, uh, remember when, uh, when uh, we invaded Somalia back in the early 90s? They were basically over there telling the Somalis that the, the black people in America were there. Now, you are in a platoon with a countryman, right, with your so-called countryman, and that same countryman is bearing false witness against you. And you're sw swearing to the same damn flag, you know what I'm saying, as this redneck over there. And you had Somalis calling African-American soldiers uh, big lips, wide nose, nigger, and so hard hair. And stuff like that. I don't know if you remember that article. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, Kelly, they they do it here on my on my on my page. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, you know, Bantu you're, you're, slave. Here we, here we go. Bantu slave. They call me Bantu slave. Uh, well, yeah. I'll be. I'm a proud man. I'm a proud. I'm proud. You know what I'm saying? Well, all I know is we're the strongest group of black people on the freaking planet. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud. We're the most beautiful. The most beautiful, the strongest group of black people on the planet. I can take my people any place and we'll, we'll rule. But the bottom line is this. The bottom line is white Americans, right, is not our countrymen. 
The white American is our freaking enemy. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm giving I'm giving uh being vague and abstract about that because I can't say all white men, I never said all white men are the devil, but the white man in America, his interests are not ours. Now the white same white man will tell you, well, don't stick up for your flag. Salute the flag. Now, now after I just said that, Dinus, what do you how do you feel hey, about whoa, whoa, whoa. Let, let me cut you off real quick? So here we here we go. It's already happening. Hojin K. Kala only sees the world through his Western lens. Here we go. Here we go. It's starting already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's starting already. Yeah. And yeah, we all see the world through a Western lens. Yeah, but the Western lens will dominate the world worldview. You know what I'm saying? I see the world through the Western lens. Which, well, you have the same America that goes around the world and puts out propaganda. The reason why like Africans have this misconception about us is because you have a purposeful media that packages them. You don't see the good life in America that many black people built for centuries. The neighborhoods and everything like that, South Jamaica, Queens, generations of black people, hardworking black people. The, the, the richest neighborhoods in New York are black. You know what I'm saying? The richest middle class in New York is black. But you don't see that. All you see is the projects and everything. There's black, it's black communities that have been successful here for hundreds of years, particularly here on the Eastern Coast here. But all you see is the slums, the crime problem, and everything. And they put that out there in the international media. And to, why? Because they want you to think that about us. You know what I'm saying? They want you to think that we are no good and everything. Now, this is the same freaking country that tells me that I got to freaking say, oh, beautiful, all spacious guy. If I see a black man saying, I'll smack you in your freaking head. Oh, beautiful, oh, spacious, uh, oh, grand bird, rainbow, baby. Oh, there's about their magic. Oh, America, oh, America, oh, America. God's in this graceful day. Hey, get out of here with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Bottom line is, bottom line is, bottom line is this. Neo-Negroism has to go. I'm not going to be a Negro for no one. You know what I'm saying? Neo-Negroism. Somebody said, African-American has cameras. Well, let me tell you something. The African-American is, is, we live private lives. We're not going to put the real black people that live normal lives every day. We're not on world star hip hop. You know what I'm saying? We're not on world star hip hop. And freaking, uh, somebody said, I can sing for real. You really serious? You serious? Are y'all serious? You know, I sing sometimes, but I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I, I thought about doing something. Sometimes I do karaoke and everything like that. But I want to know. You guys think I really can sing? I mean, I, 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 mean, I, I might, I might, I might have to reassess my career option. <laughs> but, the bottom line is, the bottom line is, uh, we as black people in America, you know what I'm saying, you don't never, you will never see the real black America. You know what I'm saying? Never, remember Ralph Bell, you remember Ralph Bell's book, The Invisible Man? You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't. But, okay, but, this, Ralph, my, but my, this is my issue though. There's this guy, the code that brings up the Western mindset. This is the same thing I always bring up. Black Americans were told not to be militant, not to be radical, not to come to Africa with that Western mindset. But for some ops, but for some reason, Chinese, Indians, whites, Arabs, Lebanese, they don't get that memo. And not only that, the Arabs, the Arabs in uh in, in Liberia that are sucking the country dry and sending out uh plain loads of gold every day, uh, that I've got news about. You know, I'm privy to some news on the ground in Liberia. They got their own militia. They hired their own armies and mercenary groups. There's all mercenary groups. Chinese got their own mercenaries. You know what I'm saying? Somebody asked me, are you going to have your own protection on the continent? No, we should just sit there and let everybody rob and shoot us. No, we shouldn't have guns. No, no, we should be in Africa just completely disarmed so somebody can just shoot us and, uh, at, at will or whatever like that. No, we ain't going to be armed. No, it's just, but the, all these other people, Chinese people, all, they got security groups. They got fencing that says do not trespass. And everything, you know what I'm saying? They do. They, they're setting up shop. Turkey is building a military base on the continent, you know. But every time African Americans talk about, well, we got legitimate interests on the continent that we want to do, you know what I'm saying? Somebody wants to break and tell us, well, don't come over there with that Western mindset. What the hell are you talking about? You stupid neo Negro jigaboo jumping jungle fool. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm sick of that. You know what I'm saying? Lord have mercy. You know, and the bottom line is, man, the black man in America, you know, we're tired. 
We're tired of the white American, and we're tired of the Negro Negroes on the African continent. We're tired of the Asians, you know what I'm saying? We're tired of the Arabs, they're all enemies. You know what I'm saying? Anybody who's not joining with us with this is a friggin' enemy. And we're gonna treat you accordingly. You know what I'm saying? That's the way it is. <laughs> shout, shout out to uh shout out to uh Brian Hooper, uh who's in the who's in the chat, B A I O, Brian Hooper. Yeah, somebody said uh Evel Carnell screaming now Pan African is dead. Only thing dead is that that uh, hey, yeah, hold on, hold on. Hey, whoa, hold on. It's not a coincidence, bro. The the message is spreading. It is spreading, spreading. and they can't do anything. Uh, you, you, you gotta meet me, guys. Guys, uh, let me rip into let me rip into the Mama Mulata for a second. Let me rip into Mama Mulata. I got I got to set something up, Dynasty. Man. And uh, folks, folks, I'm not trying to be a comedian tonight. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I, but go ahead, bro. You got, Mama, you, got the, you got the floor. Go ahead. But the but Mama Mulata. Hold on. Come on, come on. Are you stupid? Let's see. All right. Let's set this up right. Come on, load up you fork. I don't know what the hell. Try to get this out of here. Sorry. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. All right, here we go. Can you see it, Dinus? Dinus, you hear? We're good. I see it. I see it. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. All right. All right. Here's our mama Milana. You see what she has on, right? You'll say she goes, uh 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 this is from a, a stroke a year ago. Is Farrakha White, can African Americans go back to Africa? You know, see, see you understand something about Mama Milana, you know what I'm saying? And the misery, the mistress of misery. She hates our African roots, you know what I'm saying? Africa to her is so damning place and everything. Because she loves mostly her American side. She loves her white side. You know what I'm saying? She has more white blood in her. That's that white woman. That's the white woman in her speaking. You know what I'm saying? She hates her African roots and everything. You know what I'm saying? She hates being black and everything. And so, therefore, she imposing. And like I said, the mulatto, the mulatto, and these mulattoes and mulattoes and whatnot, they, they won't go anyplace. Their whole objective is to have a platform by which everybody, all of us, reject our Africanness. And our bounty that's waiting for us and everything on the global scale to sit here in misery and worry about uh, 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 trying to assimilate and integrate into uh, 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 white Americans. You know what I'm saying? So I think you're being too harsh. But I don't think I think I'm being nice. You know what I'm saying? Mama Mulata. You know what I'm saying? The mystery of the uh, uh, the misery of mi the mistress misery. Oh, what was it? Uh, the uh, the mistress of misery, you know what I'm saying, who always gives us all these problems every night. Black folks can't do that. Black folks can't do that. I mean, how you gonna go out there and spend twenty dollars on a Black Panther movie when we ain't got that type of money? <laughs> we ain't got that. Type. I mean, yo, I'm like, yo, Mama Milana, we ain't that broke. Jeez, I spent thirty five dollars on Black Panther that night, man. Best thirty five dollars I ever spent. Dinus, I had beer, I had wings, man. We were sitting in a friggin' uh, stadium seating, man. It was like this. When they're flying into Wakanda, I had a friggin' ball. But Mama Mulata was sitting there. Ah, they gonna get give me all that money? Blah, blah, that money that can be We should be out here talking about how we gonna get our how we gonna get our uh, affirmative action reparations from the government. Yeah, you're gonna be another five hundred years. All right, let me tell you something, folks. The Negro, Negro, right? The Negro is, uh, I give the Negro, the creation of the Negro started in, in uh, 1619, right? Hold, all right, uh, uh, Dennis? 1619, that was when the first Negroes were brought to the New World, right? 1619, next June of next year, 
June of next year, exactly 12 months, it'll be 400 years. The black African man who became the American Negro has been in America. In that 500, 400 years, right, we have not advanced to the level. You're still complaining about racism, white supremacy, racism, white supremacy. We need inclusion. We need this. We need that. We need to uh, do this. We need that. And but then when I saw about nationhood, they won it yesterday. Okay. McCall, give us a time frame. Give us a time frame. Yo, know, how come you ain't got no boots on the ground? Negro, I mean, you've been telling me that you're gonna rise up in America for 40 years. You know what I'm saying? You rose up in the 1960s and the white man put your ass back down. You know what I'm saying? You rose up in the 1980s, you know what I'm saying? The white man put your ass back down. You rose up in Los Angeles and what in the riots in uh, 1992. The white man put your ass down. You back begging for them for crumbs and everything like that. You rose up and whatnot, you know, in Hollywood. You got a few roles on TV and everything like that and everything. And you still, you got to keep rising up and everything. And so, therefore, and then you would sit here and play, we ain't where we're supposed to be. It's going to take 500 years. I see the one report. It's going to take 500 years for black people to catch up to white people. So you got all this disparity. You got places like Detroit, all these places like this that are falling apart. They got no hope and everything. You ain't got no timetable. Yeah, you don't have any benchmarks, right? But yet, when we talk about a nation, let's build a nation, not for everybody, but the future generations, you want it done in three years. You know what I'm saying? We gave you 400 years, and we're still catching hell. You know what I'm saying? 400 years, and you're still getting shot by the police. 400 years, and we still got shit, black on black violence, self hate. You know what I'm saying? We got colorism. We got all this kind of freaking uh, stuff going on. But yet, but yet, you want me to have a miracle pill. And give you uh, 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 results in like three years. What's the time thing for the BAIO? You know what I'm saying? What's what's going on? Have you got boots on the ground? Are we gonna be doing this by next year? Well, you've been well, you've been getting your ass kicked by the white man in America for 400 years. If you can give the white man 40 years, I I, I asked for at least uh, can you give me 40? You know what I'm saying? I'm only asking for what one percent of what the white man took from you. He took 400 years, 400 years of your life. 400 years while he was building. Let me tell you something. From sea to shining sea, if a white man wants, if a, if a gangster like Bugsy Siegel can say, I look at a desert and say, I see a city with casinos here and everything like that. And guess what? He can make it happen. But a black man, you you got this brother, Jay Morris. He has a vision one night. And y'all sitting there, and Bet Cardinal, Mama Mulata, you know what I'm saying? The mistress of misery, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, throwing shade at him. Pan Africans is dead. Jay Morris is dead. The lady's crazy. Stop telling me about some freaking Milada, Mama Milada chick. You know, she's irrelevant. Because the bottom line is this they don't want black people succeeding in anything, but begging the white man for everything. That's all she is. You know what I'm saying? She's a Milada. She's a, she's a codependent. You know what I'm saying? She wraps herself in the American flag. She's sick. You know what I'm saying? She wants to be white. And because she's not white, she's going to punish us. You know what I'm saying? We got to bear the brunt of her, her self-hate. You know what I'm saying? Her self-loathing. Us, us, us self-respecting black people know better than this. You know what I'm saying? We're going to build for a future for ourselves. We're going to build here, and we're going to build on the African continent and, and beyond. We're going to see this thing through. But it's not going to be overnight. This is nothing overnight. This is a new ideology. The more people sign on, the more people get involved in everything, and lo the, the spirit of the BAI burns in your heart and everything like that, we'll be fine. We will be fine. You know what I'm saying? So, so, uh, oh, you got anything to say, Dinus? No, I'm just, uh, I'm just reading, going through the, uh, going through the chat room and all that good stuff. But just, I want to go back to the, uh, the, the excuses we give to dusty neo Negroism. And we touched on one of them, the uh, uh, guns mysteriously popping up in alleyways right. in Chicago. And I used to take that and run with it. So and it me, I said to myself, like, in fact, I was on Skid Row. I used to, uh, Skid Row in L.A. has the highest homeless population in America. Uh, mm -hmm. 85 to 90 percent of it is black. 
I saw, uh, here's another one. They used to drop off drugs in the alleyways along with the guns in the black community. I saw a, uh, a syringe, like a heroin syringe on the ground right. on the skid row. Like, I chose not to pick that shit up. Like, I saw a crack on the ground. I chose not to pick it up. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. for some yeah. reason, you know, we are justifying this dusty neo Negroism as if we don't have a choice as if as if we can say no we can't say no we let, me have give that. Let, let me let me give you an example you got, you got, you got, you got, okay, this, right? all right another fellow mulatto uh michael larry dyson you know what i'm saying and uh he goes around see the problem is you have young brothers out there and they always talk in the abstract you know what i'm saying i you know one thing one thing you ever watch that show uh uh lock up raw Sometimes you lock up lock, 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 lock law. Every time when you interview them brothers out there, I have never once heard one of them on camera say, yo, the system put me here. Now nah, it's racism. I never once heard that. When they're doing hard time, you know what they say? Yo, I put myself here. When I had to come in front, I had choices I had to make and everything. Even though it was bad and everything, I chose not to do the right thing and I ended up here. You know? Why is it that when the criminal you know, they don't have enough respect for the criminal to say, you know what I'm saying, uh, I made this choice and everything. Even a lot of criminals will say, if I don't have do anything else in life, if I'm going to be a criminal, it's because I made that choice. Remember something, a lot of times they don't have any power, any decision making in life, you know? So when they choose to be a criminal and choose to do that, it's because they chose. They, they, were, they were, at that one moment in time, they were the master of their destiny. But, but a lot of these sycophants want to sit there and apologize and say, oh, they were driven by racism, white supremacy. It's hard out here, brother. These are sick people that we need to friggin'. These people are killing us. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody knows everybody in the world has a choice. Every Pookie and Ray Ray has a choice whether he wants to do bad. Because down the road, that same Pookie and Ray Ray, when he gets himself together, he'll say, yo, look, he'll be the one to test me and say, don't go there. Because I was where, where, where you was at and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? I know the lore of the streets, you know what I'm saying? I know the lore of drugs. I know the lore of promiscuity and all stuff like that. But And I fell into it. And look what it happened to me. I don't want that to happen to you. And he can save lives because he has a testament. But when you dismiss him and, uh, and say, well, you know, the system, he had no choice and everything like that. And he just uh, stupid. Then what that doesn't say is black people particularly have no will. We're just animals, you know. And the one thing what people will tell you is when uh, when uh, when, a, when a criminal gets to be a sentencer, we, when you listen to these brothers in jail, they'll tell you saying, "Look, as a man, I made the choice." You know, what I'm saying I didn't have any power over anything else in my life, but when I decided to pick up that gun, it gave me power. That's what it's all about. It gave me power. It gave me. I, I had my own destiny in my hand. I had a friend of mine, not a friend of mine, but excuse me, not a friend of mine, a friend of my brother's, right? I think, it, I think because of this incident saved my brother's life, you know what I'm saying? Um, this kid was kind of, this kid was, this kid was uh, kind of wild, you know what I'm saying? And uh, his boy that we, we linked back up with is doing really well in life right now. I mean, really well. You know, he's making like 200K a year and whatnot. You know, we would never thought back in the 90s, man, these brothers were wild. Man. I mean, crazy wild, you know what I'm saying? Now he got a good job, wife, kids, and everything like that. Make it to you. So you don't get it. Some people will change. But there's one brother that was with him this one night, right, in Jersey. And the, and, uh, and the incident was caught on camera. And you may say, see it on certain videos. Where they tried, he tried to rob a store in Jersey. And the guy came behind the counter with a bag in his hand. And the bag had a gun and he killed him. You know what I'm saying? That was one of my brother's friends. You, know you should probably see the video. You know what I'm saying? The video's out there online. You know what I'm saying? It went viral. Uh, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, out TV outlets, you know what I'm saying? And after that, man, that just basically says something, man. You know what I'm saying? The night, he was like, well, I'm just going to ride or die. I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. So from Virginia, they drove to hey, hey, Kyle, Jersey Kyle, on the way up to New York. Brass, can you get uh, Yvette Cornell off the screen unless you just want her to stay there? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm going to get her off the screen. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, you screen sharing. Let me see. Am, am I, is she off? Yeah, yeah, okay. we're good. We're good. She's off. Okay, cool.
you know, my point, my point is this, my point is this, you know, people take their destiny into their own hands. A part of a man, no matter what you do, you can be richer. Because if that was the case, why are so many rich people, right, go to jail for murder, you know what I'm saying? Trying to kill their wife for insurance policy and everything. Murder and crime is in everyone's heart. The basis of mankind is uh, is in every man's heart. Every man, you don't know what a man's heart is, you know what I'm saying? A person could be poor, have not any money, uh, living on the street. I was uh, down in the dumps one time, you know what I'm saying? My lowest point, you know what I'm saying, as a young man, when I was sleeping in my car, I had no place to go one night, you know what I'm saying? I never once, I had to tour the, the, the lure of temptation of selling drugs, but I said no. You know why I said no? Because I knew one day I was going to be on a platform like this. You know what I'm saying? I want that to be my testament. I never went into that life. I never sold drugs. I was never arrested. You know what I'm saying? I never went to jail. I never did all those things. I resisted it. I'd rather went without. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather be on the street homeless. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather have not, not eat for three days than to sell, put drugs in my, my brother's and sister's hands. You know? I would never do that. You know what I'm saying? I wanted that testament. You know what I'm saying? So, so, there, so, so, so therefore, yes, you know, like you were saying, we have this idea that, you know, so, oh, yeah, the white man put the drugs in the community. Or the, and then what gets me is this. Remember when the movie uh, American Gangster came out? Remember when American Gangster came out? Yeah, yeah, with, uh, with Denzel Washington. Yeah, Denzel Washington, he played Frank Lucas. Now, this was unique about this movie, right? Up until that time, it was always assumed that, oh, the heroin was run in by the white man and all sorts of that. We don't have no remember New York, New Jack City. We don't have no planes. That was an excuse. We don't have no planes. We don't have no this, right? But yet in this movie, it showed the truth that yes, there were black drug dealers, you know what I'm saying, that flew planes from around the world and, and cut up drugs and had a drug dis distribution, a extensive drug distribution to, to black people. You know what I'm saying? And then what gets me is this, right? I remember when Farrakhan, uh, when the movie came out, right? Uh, Frank Lucas, for some stupid reason, was was at a rally and Farrakhan was there. And somebody told Farrakhan uh, he was in the audience. He was like, "Yeah, we got our brother Frank Lucas there, but he's I get this. He goes, he's a victim too. Now we know the CIA was behind the drugs and everything like that. And basically, Frank Lucas was like saying, "Wait a minute, thank you." I'm telling you, that's how it happened. I brought those, those drugs in here. <coughs> you know, there was no CIA, you know, you know this, that, the other thing. He said, you know, the movie didn't tell the story. And Frank Luke was like, no, I, the movie is accurate. I brought the drugs in here. He'll say, I went over to the jungle. He'll say, negotiate price, and I brought those drugs in here. Now, that goes against the whole conventional wisdom that there's this white man, you know, and a lot of the white man off the hook. But there's only white people and black people, innocent victims, with drugs just there, and we're just trying to make the money off it. That's a lot of crap. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew a lot of drug dealers in my life and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? They were just as ruthless and greedy, all about the money. You know what I'm saying? They could give a damn about who they kill. They don't give a damn about who they who they uh cook on the stuff and whatnot. I had an uncle that was a drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? A drug my uncle Tyrone, when I was a little kid, was a drug dealer, was tested. Probably from um, that blue magic stuff that he did. Because this was the early 70s, right? He was uh, found by my mother in my grandparents' basement, you know, and they pumped him full of drugs as a test. They would do this. People were found him dead because they would test the potency of the heroin. You know what I'm saying? Uncle Tyrone was hanging out with these guys from, that he knew as kid, as little boys from Harlem, right? And my grandparents had moved, uh, my grandparents had moved to South Jamaica, Queens. But some of his friends from Harlem had found him, found him right? And basically, you know, follow the uh, South Bay Queens, and they used to hang out and stuff like that, you know. And next thing you know, they were testing drugs, they pumped him full of drugs, heroin and whatnot, you know, and, uh, you know, and he died. You know what I'm saying? So I have this in my family as a testament, man. You know, the bottom line is this it's this idea that, you know, that, oh, it's a way, I'm sick of that. You know what I'm saying? I've lost three cousins to the streets, you know, gunned down and gun violence to the streets, you know what I'm saying, in New York. You know, so the bottom line is this. The bottom line is we don't want to, the, the bottom line is the black man in America doesn't want to take any responsibility. We want to take all the achievement of black America and everything, but we don't want to take the failures and responsibility. When you talk about nationhood and being a nation of people, where they, you got to take the responsibility 
You got to take the success and you got to take the failure. You got to take it all. You know what I'm saying? When you basically surrender and say, look, tell black America that we're ready to become a people, we're ready to do this, that means you got to take response. You, it's something arresting you, right? That that childness in you, right? That, that, ch that childness and that codependency and that, uh, that, that foolishness, the coon in you has to be arrested. You know what I'm saying? And then a, the real man will come out of you. In other words, basically, you have to, we have to say, okay, if we step on, when we step out on the international stage and say that we are ready to govern ourselves, we're ready to do this, that, the other thing, that means we're going to take full responsibility for our pookies, our ray rays, and all these kind of stupid stuff like that, because we're going to put people on the right path. You know what I'm saying? This is what we expect from you. You know what I'm saying? If you have, when you have a civilization, everyone has expectations. You know, you have expectations. This is your duty right here. This is what you. This is what you can achieve. But this is not what you're guaranteed to achieve. And you, it's like anything else in life. Sometimes you make it big. Sometimes you don't. But the bottom line is this: it's going to be your civilization. Your civilization means you can fail and go under, and you, or you can rise to the top. But there's no guarantee. With a little bit of luck and the stars lining up, you might be that one that's shining on the hill. But that's it. But in America, you don't have a chance. You know what I'm saying? You don't even have that chance. Like I said earlier about Bugsy Bug Siegel, how does a gangster build a freaking city? Why? Because he's white and he's in America. This is his dominion. This is his domain. You know what I'm saying? If you want the same thing, you have to have a dominion and you have to have a domain. And the only thing you have to, uh, 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 the, uh, the only thing you have to have basically is a place to practice it. You have to have a place to practice your dominion and your domain. Where do you dominate over? Dominion means where you dominate. You know what I'm saying? Your dominion, your soil. Where's your manifest destiny? You know what I'm saying? Where is it that everything that uh, uh, that goes right is going to fall right into your place, fall right into your lap, or fall right in line? That's what happens in America. <coughs> That's why we always lose. Because it's another racist dominion, another another racist domain, and he deemed the African as the lowest part of his civilization. He basically basically told Indians, "Okay, you can have a reservation." As a matter of fact, many white men married eight Indian women. You know what I'm saying? He gave the Mexicans a place in America, right? He let the Chinese uh, into America, right? But he said the African race will always be a slave. People of black skin and kicky hair. The African race are beyond redemption. It says it right there in the Texas Constitution. This is a white man's land, and we're coming out. We're coming out 400 years, and we're just now barely being treated like human beings. And you dare to ask me how long it's going to take for Pan African to work? Well, you've been sitting here in America with your Negro. When's the Negroism going to work? It's Pan Africanism and Black national Black Africanism versus Negroism. Yvette Carnell is a neo Negroist. You know what I'm saying? Let's be Negroes. You know, we got to get out there and get your bag and cup. You know, I got my ramen noodles. You know what I'm saying? You know, we, you know, we got to save our money and whatnot. You know, how you going to tell black folks to invest? Invest or not? I mean, Lord have mercy. Hold on. Hold on. I, I peeked in to your vet's uh, chat room. Somebody in her chat room said this, and this is this is this is a and he has a great point. He says the vet is leading y'all into the bleaching bucket of second class US citizenship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all they she's a mulata. That's all she craves, second class. That's all she knows. She believes she's fundamentally a part, eternally a part of America. You know what I'm saying? That's what she is. Well, most black people are like this, man. It's just I think when the party's over, the party's over, <coughs> and it's been a, it's been a ride. But now the whole thing is four, we're coming up on four hundred years. Should we the next four hundred years? Should the, we navigate the manifest destiny and uh and uh, uh should we navigate for the next four hundred years doing what? White America is fighting for its own life. And think about that. White America has the Chinese to compete with. Remember when the whole integration, all that happened, right? America produced, America in the West produced 99% of the world's goods and services. There were no airplanes in Asia. 
being built. There was nothing, you know what I'm saying? Japan was barely an industrial nation, right? Now you got Singapore's economy on par with uh, Britain and France, you know what I'm saying? You got competition in Asia now, where most of the world's manufacturing and everything has shifted to the Pacific. You know what I'm saying? The white people are fighting for its life. The last stronghold they have is Africa. It's monetization. As long as they can keep Africa uh, backward another 100 years, they might have a chance. Your birth pop population is down. That's why they're bringing these. The only chance they have is they got to bring these Muslim immigrants in and they hope they can blend in. They, they're hoping they would rather bring a lot of Muslims into a, a thing because they're white. Like, you know what I'm saying? And these people can turn, uh, even if they, they, they wouldn't even be willing to sacrifice uh, Christianity, right? So to save their, their republic by populating these countries with Muslim people. You know what I'm saying? They would do that. They're not going to populate with Africans. All you people that think you, you Africans and everything, they're freaking basically uh, the, throwing Africans out, out, out left and right. Why? Because they feel your genetic. This is one thing Africans don't seem to understand. Your DNA, you know what I'm saying? You may think you're white on the inside, right? But you produce black African DNA. And they feel once you mate with an African, the white race is destroyed, whatever. You know what I'm saying? They don't feel the same genetic suicide with Arabs. You know what I'm saying? So they'll they don't care if the Arabs are terrorists. Genetic genetic annihilation, the worst that the worst that'll happen to Northern Europe is in a couple hundred years, they'll look like Southern European Italians. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you understand what I'm getting with this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Southern European yeah, 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 yeah. Western Europe will look like Eastern Europe. That's that's what they're looking at. I'm saying we could turn them into Western Europeans and everything like that. They won't have pale skin, they have olive skin. But they will not let Africans come up there in large numbers like that because that will be the death of their race. You know what I'm saying? They fear the black man's uh 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 what's the nice word to say? Uh, they fear the black man's manhood. You know what I'm saying? They fear the black man's penis. You know what I'm saying? That thing, that penis is the most feared thing on the freaking planet. You know what I'm saying? And you Africans go up there and you go up there dating these, trying to date these Italian girls, wonder why you find, find, find yourself dead or killed in Europe and everything like that. Why are you being beaten and they throw bananas on stadiums while you're, uh, while you're playing soccer? They're showing you they don't want you there. You know what I'm saying? They don't want you there. You know what I'm saying? My Nigerian friends, they don't care about you. Oh, we Nigerians, they don't care about your black asses. Don't you understand that? You are black. You are African. They don't want you. Lord have mercy. Yeah, Africans work with everything, and I'm sick of it. You know what I'm saying? It's neo Negroism. The worship of everything, uh, thing. Somebody said. <laughs> Uh, somebody says Uhuru Sasa is a, a dude that loved to hear himself talk. <laughs> he took a shot at me. Should I love to hear myself talk? Yeah, sometimes, bro. I do like to hear myself talk. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, somebody has to say these things. It's neo Negroism. 400 years. We gave the Negro 400 years. And we're still Negroes. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready to be something else now, Dinus. I'm ready to search for Uhuru. I'm ready for the Uhuru uprising, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready for the awakening, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready for an Afrikstan, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready for a nation of my own. I'm ready for pan-Africanism, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready for global competition based on uh, land infrastructure nationhood. You know, I think that's the next 40 years we should be concentrating on. Neo-Negroism is not going to be a, a thing. I don't want to be second-class citizenship you know, to anything. <clears throat> now, does this mean... Everyone get on a boat and leave. No, it just means our minds at least. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Our minds at least. You say, well, Carla, how can you, uh, uh, what, what do you have minds? You can live in America. Let me give you an example. Chinese have lived here for 100 years and never assimilated. You know, and you can't get them to assimilate. <laughs> they, you got Chinese people who lived here for 100 years in Chinatown, never knew how to speak English. How the hell did that happen? But the black man, they got us on display. You know what I'm saying? We're on TV every night. I'm you know, saying we got to be. Have you ever seen a Chinese sitcom in America? No. Do they care about being a Chinese sitcom? No. Have you ever seen the Chinese run for office? Like it's going to change it. Have you ever seen Chinese civil rights? But yet they benefit more than anybody else from America. You know what I'm saying? And they're not putting no work in. 
the, they are not they they are not trying to change America and everything because they have Asia. <coughs> the black man does not have Africa as a base to operate out of. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, we're trying to basically change America. We got to change America. I have a dream. Yo, oh, yeah. That one day, this nation will rise up. Right? You remember Rise up. Remember that? Rise up. This nation will rise up. Rise up. This nation will yeah, rise, rise up. up. You understand? Know and live out the true meaning of its freedom. We hold these truths to be evidence that all men are created equal. Hey, hey oh. real, real quick, Kyle. Let me uh let me give a shout out to some of the people in the chat room. Uh, in the red, boo, taboo, chief, Drino. Thank you so much for the super chats. Really appreciate it, guys. Don't be stingy with those likes. Please hit the like button. Uh, hit that like button. Please share. Um, and, and, and thank you for joining us. And you know, we always appreciate the brother uh, Kala for coming on and, and and blessing us with this information. All right, go ahead, uh, Kala. Yeah. Okay. So therefore, like I said, Pan Africanism. Black nationalism is the way of the future. It's not, it's always been here, right? People don't seem to understand this. But surprisingly, you know, the reason why Pan African is <coughs> has never been in the forefront, because of academia. Most black academics in academia, people who fund black academics was never funded for the interest of liberating black African people in America. It was for, for basically trying to create new Negroes and keep and uh keeping negroism going you know what i'm saying you have to basically uh uh you see this you have black black professors will talk about racism right talk about racism and then they'll say okay well the solution is uh it's always been everything always been we have to change the hearts minds of white people we see now and then also oprah winfrey did you see oprah winfrey said the other day, she said, we have to get rid of um, <coughs> older white people. Older white people. No, she was a while ago she wrote that. She did a video said, older white people have to die out. Now, if that was the case, then why do you have all these young white people in school do all these racial incidents where kids and, uh, uh, weren't even born uh, during the first Gulf War and the second Gulf War in 9-11, and you say Dylan Roof wasn't even around during 9-11, but yet look what happened. You got people, oh, well, yeah, well, he was around for 9 11, 2010. I'm thinking something, something else. But the whole thing, point, my point is this the America keeps producing these racists. You know what I'm saying? These racists after racists keep popping up in America and everything. And they keep saying it's old, that it keeps re cropping itself. Why? Because they know deep down inside America, that's what America is. That's what America stands for. America stands for white supremacy white domination over people of color. Why? Because America has never paid for her sins. America got away with murder. And so therefore, therefore, that in just reading history books and bowling them to think, okay, well, geez, if my ancestors uh, didn't have to apologize or didn't have to do this, why should I? That's the thinking. Why should I have to apologize? Whatever. Why can't uh, 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 my ancestors used to call them niggers and all this kind of stuff like that. Why shouldn't I? Those were the good days. Black people knew their place. And so, therefore, there's a nostalgia for the good old days in America. The good old days when black people knew their place. <coughs> this was clearly a white country. And so, so therefore, why should I change? Now, that so, so human nature is this. If I got a good thing, I feel like I'm superior and everything. I may not uh, agree with it, but you know something? I, like, I think I'm going to ride this white thing out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I know that police officers out there uh, are costing this black guy because he's black. But uh, maybe, I won't say nothing because maybe that officer could save my life one day because he might be able to knock the right black man upside the head that might try to break into my house. You know? <clears throat> so white people benefit from our misery and pain. And the bottom line, it's only human nature, you know. They ain't gonna go for so far and be like, you know, hands up, no shoot, no black people, no justice, no peace. Black lives matter. Why? Because the bottom line is this: they're fighting for their own survival. You know what I'm saying? Their survival's on the line here. Their survival is, you know, well, geez, 
You got millions of immigrants coming over here. You got black people want my jobs. What about my jobs for my kids? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Wages are going down, stuff like that. Crime is out of control in the cities. I really don't want this uh, 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 stuff in here. So, so therefore, maybe a little bit of racial pushback might not be such a bad thing. Maybe, you know, I should, you know, this day else. So they'll listen to the alt right. You know what I'm saying? They'll listen to the, all these extremists and everything. And then also you got the alt left and everything. Same thing. <coughs> Same thing. It's about living in a secluded white world. You know, most black people don't support no LGBT and all this kind of crazy stuff. So they could uh, 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 resort to their gated communities where they have their orgies and their sex parties and their dope and everything like that. That's the life they want to live. You know what I'm saying? And then you got the other side, puritanical, white, Christian, everything. They want to go into their, their, their version of what white America should be. You know what I'm saying? So black America, where, where, where do we fit in all this? You know what I'm saying? Where do we fit in all? We don't have any place to go. You know what I'm saying? We can't go into the, the alt right world, you know, you know, to say we don't really get down with the 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 the, the left wing uh, uh, ideology and everything like that. So where do we go? You know, white people are looking out for themselves, and they're telling you, you know, they're telling you, look, look, you know, you black people got to grow up. You can't, we can't keep taking care of you. There's nothing on the docket. Obama had eight years on the docket to talk about. He never once mentioned. Black businesses, never once. In all his eight years in office, he never mentioned black businesses. <clears throat> he never thought uh, talking about black business was important. He never thought really talking about race was important. But it was race, ultimately, that white people saw when they had a chance to elect Donald Trump. They're like this, you know, this is the America we want to be in. A white country... <coughs> And the white male feels that, okay, we're losing everything. We're losing our land. We're losing our culture. We're losing it. We want, we want it back. And we're at the point now where it's like, and black people didn't fight, fight Donald Trump uh, this election. What does it tell you? It tells you that black, black people, and this is what Yvette Cardinal needs to really get, get to what they can. Black people have given up on, I think we got to that point where we're giving up on uh, trying to change America. Am I? Am, do you do you feel that, Dinus? Huh? I feel that. I feel you, you're absolutely right. <laughs> when, <laughs> especially, especially when it's you know when. Okay, so you know they just passed a law basically saying that <coughs> if you don't vote, they'll take away your voting rights. Right. If you don't vote, or you don't renew it. Yeah, because I mean, because right. it's like we, and you know, who that's directed at. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, because we, we don't we haven't voted. We like no, so, so it's like this. It's like this. All these years, right? We've seen voting has gotten us really no place, right? No place. And then they want to take that away from us. They want to try to take slowly take that away from us, right? And so the point where it's, you know, if black people come back strong in the political process, I don't know if that'll really happen. <clears throat> you had Camden, New Jersey, right? Where you had, even though in Florida, I think it was, and in Virginia. They restored voting rights to felons, which is good. <coughs> There's still people not showing up to the polls. Camden, New Jersey, uh, can you blame this? So have you been, have you ever been to Camden, New Jersey? Uh, only the airport, only Newark. No, no that's way up, way up. Yeah. Camden, Camden's right when you go off the turnpike is like the first egg, first city right off the turnpike, whatever. Whatever it is, if you haven't been there, don't go. You know what I'm saying? Don't go. <clears throat> not even on Sundays. You know what I'm saying? The, the city is just the city. They want to put a big blanket over. Hey, is is it Camden? Where uh, remember that movie, uh, New Jersey Drive, when they were stealing all the cars? I uh, uh, I don't know. That might have been Newark, but I know Camden is the freaking crime capital of the East Coast. You know, it's really bad. You know what I'm saying? It's I mean, run down, really, really bad. You know, Camden, New Jersey is the worst. Well, anyway, Camden, New Jersey has um. Had twenty percent voter turnout. Twenty percent, twenty percent voter turnout. <coughs> people to the point where voting doesn't matter anymore. And Mayor De Blasio, uh, remember the guy was like had a, a fake gun in his hand. Now he's supposed to be a liberal mayor. You know, say a liberal mayor, and uh, he's a uh, 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 married to a black woman, and he said the police was justified. You know, 
police came and came on the scene, gunned the guy down, mentally ill guy. <coughs> and he said, well, the police are justified. He tried to get back in with the police union and all stuff like that. And that's supposed to be a black straw. Oh, New York City, Mayor de Blasio, all oh, kind of freaking nonsense and everything like that. So you got black people in, in the quagmire in big cities and everything. Nobody gives a damn about you. You got even if you got black people, the police unions and everything, the police, the fire departments, and these things <coughs> are always in the hands of whites. And something else I wanted to talk about too was this: you have white people, the white people, and this is like I said, maybe we got white Negroes out there too. <clears throat> people don't seem to seem to understand something, right? While they basically don't want to question police and everything, the police in America are getting more and more powerful, more and more, but more than it was in the last 15 years, right? They shoot people and it's not really investigated or whatever like that. They're getting away with murder, right? Now, people don't seem to understand something. When you have a police, right, police, that police officer is not just taking orders from your local mayor or whatever or whatever policy. He has all kinds of directives coming down from the UN, uh, 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 international organizations, people who make policy, who have the ear of local governance and everything like that, who affect policy in the police, because they know the police is a, is the front line of keeping the city, of keeping the citizens in line against the bureaucracy. Now, what is the bureaucracy? If, it, if it's compromised, it's compromised by international banks, like the people, like the World Trade Organization. Remember how they have all these riots at the uh, uh, in Seattle with the World Trade Organization went there a couple years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, remember that? Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. I, I now, Sam, now, what gets me is this: Why are local police involved in that? You know what I'm saying? Why are the local police with military and stuff? So who's basically giving a, a local police this much power to quash opposition on a, a, for an organization that's not even American? That's international. <clears throat> the black community is a softening ground, you know what I'm saying? If police can call the black community and crush you and everything like that, eventually they're going to be able to go into any community and do the same thing. You know? But you got the white people out there don't want to see it like that. They really do believe all this police, military, the militarization of police is there to protect them. They fear black people that much, or not. They would rather arm their police to the teeth, right? You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, they'll sit back and be like, oh, gee, why are you drilling this oil right in the middle of, uh, 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 of the, the bluff right there? That was such a nice beach and everything. But, well, why is this multinational? Well, we got this agreement right here. We said we could. Well, we're going to protest you and everything. So, like that. so we're going to go out there with the nice protest. The police are going to come and say, you guys got to break up the protest. You don't, give, you don't have a, a right to protest. We took away your threat. No, it's our American right, constitutional right. Blow. Guess what? You're dead, right? Now, and, and guess what? The judge says, oh, justified. In the middle of white America, that's what's coming next. You know what I'm saying? That's what's coming next. And if they're going to do, if they could do, if they're seizing themselves up to do that to white America, you know what they're going to do to us. You know what I'm saying? Eventually. They're getting, the, the world is becoming a more deadly place. You got 300 something million people in America with all these ideas and everything floating around that's about to explode. You know, so the bottom line is that we as black people have to get ourselves together and we have to start acting like men and women. Those of us who are basically uh, who got the ear to people, you know, ear to people, we have to be the role models, the examples, and say, look, and now it's time to build. Hey, you gotta meet me, guys. Uh, oh, oh, in fact, let me, uh, real quick, let me, let me just give a shout out to some of the, uh, the super chats real quick. Shout out to uh, Hojin K. Uh, his question, and we'll get to it after Kyla uh, finishes. Why won't African Americans and African millionaires invest in the, the extraction of natural resources and the conversion of the resource sources into finished products in Africa? Shout out to Chima Madu. I'm, I'm going to answer that question. Okay, and then uh, in the red, uh, one second, almost done with the super chats. In the red, uh, Kyla, uh, where do you think the momentum will go with Trump, blatant racism, constant videos of police brutality? Will more blacks wake up and leave, or will they double down and try to fight for the land they built? And then the last super chat is Kaz Muja. Uh, hey, uh, Dinas, can you get a featured guest who can explain to us how to help the help the curriculum in Africa to properly educate the African people? 
Uh, I did a video with the brother Sam Samari. Um, check that video out, but I'll try to get him back on as well. All right, go ahead, Colin. Just wanted to get that. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. First of all, the uh, as far as like natural resources, everything we're doing that with the Rosenthal Group. Okay, we're building an African gold bullion. We built the African gold bullion back in Angola and several other places in Africa. <clears throat> the whole thing is the political will. You know, so it's hard to get things done in Africa politically, you know, because of things are lost in language translation and uh, there's a lot of stuff, nuances and stuff that goes on Africa. <coughs> but we created the Natural Resource Bank and the African Gold Bullion Bank. But the problem is most Africans aren't educated in the idea of money and monetization of uh, resources, okay? Now, as far as like uh, getting African Americans and Africans together, first of all, they have to be a place to do it. <clears throat> you have to have high, Africans have to get serious, you know. When they when Africans court Chinese and everything else, they roll out the red carpet. They bring you got to understand something. <clears throat> One thing, Africans got to be the stewards. You know, what I'm saying they have to lead the charter because we don't have a government in America. You know what I'm saying? We have nothing to protect us as far as investing in Africa. This is why we say we want a nation state of our own, by which we can have our own diplomatic channels and governments can work together to facilitate business. We don't have that in America. I would see people understand people don't seem to understand. African Americans are not a government. We're 45 million people, probably the most influential people on the planet, but we're here as Negroes. As slaves to the perpetuation of white supremacy in America. Those of us who are nationalists want to do that. We want to bring capital, bring cap, uh, build capital in America and transport it to Africa for development. That's what we want to do. You know what I'm but how do you do that when Africans aren't even reaching across the ocean at all? We get all this pushback from Africans. Diane will tell you, we get all this pushback from Africans every oh, you can't do that. You, African Americans could probably raise if, if we were organized the way the way we could. Oh, we could here, here goes my here goes my favorite color. Oh, we don't need y'all help. We don't need y'all help. Y'all y'all ain't build a nation. Y'all ain't doing nothing in America. We don't need y'all help. We don't need y'all help. Yeah, we don't need y'all help. We don't, but the Chinese and everything they're bending over backwards like buffoon. You ever see? Have you ever seen a picture of an African court? Like I was talking about my boy, right? You'll talk. I'll, I'll get back to my boy that loves that loves white people. Every time I'm sitting there in this one group, a Liberian group, he's like. Yeah, but well, white Americans in college, will you support <clears throat> the repeal of, of uh, Article 27? Article 27 says that, and the Constitutional Library says, no white people are allowed to settle or own land in Liberia. Liberia is the only African co <coughs> country <coughs> with no white or European settlement. There was never any white people living in Liberia. <coughs> in the early 20th century, you had some white people who went there as doctors and stuff like that. You had a few Dutchmen who were traders and Germans and everything like that. And there's another thing is, white Americans had almost no role in Liberia's health history and development. Now, let me say that again. White America, right, basically took Liberia, and let me say, let me, it's another thing. America goes around the world, this is what I'm gonna tell, this is what I'm gonna tell you the hypocrisy and the lie about America and exceptionalism. Liberia took a country, like I'm telling Diane today, exact same thing as America, right? <clears throat> Constitution, everything, and said, look, we're going to create a country of liberty and all stuff like that, right? Instead of America saying, you got a country that came from us and everything, usually, even, I mean, when you give the British credit, right, and the French credit, when people try to adopt their ways and everything, they help them. You're saying, hey, you fellow Frenchmen. <clears throat> America has so much disdain for Liberia, right? So much hatred because it was a black country. America has so much hatred for its former slaves. Even when they do right, the Americans try to undermine Liberia from day one. It turns the country the very existence. When American diplomats would go over there, they refuse to respect the presidency. They refuse to respect the laws. They refuse to acknowledge this country that they were on a, a separate soil and everything. Until Liberians had to really show them that you're in Liberia right now. And a couple of incidents on my blog, uh, the Santa Maria New Orleans incident, where they actually put white Americans in jail. And almost uh, 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 imprison them, you know what I'm saying, because they were disrespecting the country and everything. That's the mentality of America. America didn't do anything for Liberia. America based, and also this idea of American exceptionalism, American democracy, America doesn't even believe in it. 
You know what I'm saying? America doesn't believe in its own ideals about democracy and all stuff like that. But they want to impose, when, when it's to their convenience, they want to impose it on other people. You know? They want to make you a democracy. If, let's say you have a stable government like Libya. You have a stable government like Libya. Everything's going good. Suddenly, now it's time for them to impose their, uh, uh, insist that you create a government and have election, have so-called democracy, right? But they won't do that to Saudi Arabia. Right, the most repressive cu country the world has ever seen. Well, women can't even still drive to this day. Iraq was a, a modern state. You know what I'm saying? A secular state. America had to bomb it out of thing and we rebuild it. But they won't touch Saudi Arabia, the most repressive country, backward country in the world. Why? Because America picks and chooses who it wants to democratize and build up. You understand where I'm coming from? <coughs> so don't tell me about. America. When we get ready to build a nation, it's going to be on our own pace. It's going to be on our own time. You know what I'm saying? We know what we want out of this country. We know what we, know what we want out of Africa. America does not give a damn about us succeeding in Africa. You know what I'm saying? America, only a thing America wants to do, just like those military bases almost happened in Ghana. That was facilitated by who? Negro, Negroes in America, Negroes in Ghana from America. Let's let me tell you again, Negro, you got a lot of neo-Negroes living in Africa posing as Pan-Africanists. Let me say it again, if you don't freaking understand me. You got a lot of neo-Negroes living on the continent posing as Pan-Africanists, working for the CIA, working for the U.S. State Department, working for American corporations, and doing their bidding while they're wearing their dachikis and sipping their freaking Mai Tais. Well, you haven't been after the year, Tyler. You haven't been after the year, Tyler. No, because when I go there, it's going to be right. It's going to come correct. Heaven and earth is going to move when I start making moves on the continent. You know? So don't tell me about I haven't been to the continent yet, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> we got so many people over there buck dancing and cooning and doing absolutely nothing. So, so... <laughs> So, so that's uh, what I want to say about that. What was another question, Dinosaur? Another question. Yeah, un yeah, unmute yourself, brother. Yeah, unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah I got yeah. it. Let me, let me, let me scroll back up to him. Uh, Kyla, where do you go? Where do you think the momentum will go with Trump, blatant racism, constant videos of police brutality? Will more blacks wake up and leave, or will they? Well, have the thing. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, right? Donald Trump is president of the United States, right? You know what I'm saying? Racism has been here before Trump, whatever. Like, that's not <laughs> put it on one particular person. That's what they do, because he could be gone in four years, and then now give Negroes a chance. Oh, look, don't want Donald Trump. Listen, everything's back to normal. No, this has nothing to do with Trump, because the BAI was formed under Obama, actually. You know what I'm saying? It was formed under Barack Obama. You know what I'm saying? George Bush. You know, so therefore, our message has always been the same. <coughs> no matter who. I don't think racism is a one determinant factor to get people motivated. The idea that we should have a nation of our own should be there whether you uh, are in the military, whether you uh, live in the whitest community, or you live in the hood, whatever. Everybody should be like, hey, look, you know, Having a nation of our own on the African continent, being able to do business and do all these things that we can never do in America, facilitate trade and business and everything like that for future generations, <coughs> a place to visit, a place to travel, a place to go to, and everything like that to handle our African business. Let me let me write that down to you. <coughs> write, write this down. African Americans need a place of what? Business. African business. We don't have that right now. Right now, we have Tom, African tomfoolery. I was listening to the show last night with Dinus, with the brothers tell me. And the guy was saying, look, man, there's a lot of scams going on. Yes. Why would you go to Africa and not know? See, when people go to a country, right, they already know there's systems in place to facilitate what you want to do. A to Z. You want to do this, do this, they have consultants. What's called consulting agencies. You know, you can consult with this. They'll tell you where to go, where you go, what lawyer to talk to, boom, boom, boom. 
It's all one package. Not only that, when you have a, a relationship with your home country or institutions already there in that country, right? They can facilitate the thing for you. We have not built any institutions on the African continent to help African Americans do these things. Tell us where to go, where not to go, where not to do. All these things. Service. Had it not been for Dinah Show, somebody could have went to Ghana and put out five thousand dollars and got lost their money. You know what I'm saying? That show was dynamite last night. You know that show was dynamite. But I already knew these things because I knew people who lost money in Africa. You know what I'm saying? They got scammed. And what that does is make you bitter. It turns you against the whole thing. And that person will come back and say, you know something? I tried to do. It. I got scammed. Everything. But Africa is this, that, you know And that person is one more person using uh, will use that just to, to, to hurt our cause. We have to have, and people ask me the question, you ask me the question, the bottom line is this, the best way to do it is African Americans have to have that city state, nature state, where they can build institutions on the continent, where they can engage all the African countries and other countries from a position of strength. You know what I'm saying? Long term. Short term, yes. You know, African Americans should build institutions. When you go to Africa, you should have your own stuff facility. Hate stuff, but I don't really see that going on on the continent. You know, I don't know. Uh, what do you think about this, Diane? <coughs> Instead of building those type of institutions, we see a lot of African Americans, what they always try to do is they're building like uh, soup kitchens for the poor and uh, schools, and they're doing the work their needs in Africa should be doing themselves, you know, educating their youth and stuff like that. I, don't, I know a few sisters that, have, again, that run schools in Ghana and stuff like that, you know? You know, well, what do you think about that? I think the only person that really tried to build something was Bob Johnson, but he, I don't, I, I don't, I, he still no, has there's a lot. There's a lot of African Americans doing business, right? You right. Know? But also, what I'm saying is, there's uh, there's a lot of people that are, there's a lot of returning people that are building schools and stuff like that's good and everything. But I think it should be also we should build institutions that facilitate business, trade, and cultural change from a position of strength. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't. I don't really see that. I'm saying like, okay, we got this Ghanaian school with these school girls and everything. We got school girls. I've donated the association, the African American Association in Ghana. They got little school programs, and we got. I donated books and money and stuff like that to that and stuff like that. <clears throat> and okay, that goes good and everything, you know. And uh, all over the continent, they need children of the future, they need education and everything. But you know, but maybe because most of these pro 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 are run by women. You know what I'm saying? The women think the most important thing, oh, we got to get in school and everything. But I'm saying to myself, well, wait a minute here, you know? You know, we're going to the continent. I mean, I mean uh, are we are we going to be a burden on the continent? You know what I'm saying? Uh, we, and then also you got African Americans who go over there and they put this, they roll their kids in, in African schools. And I'm like, well, geez. And then the average Ghanaian got to pay school fees. Schools are free in Africa, you know? And I'm saying also, are you taking money out of the, their mouths? Because you want to live in Africa, you know, and, you know, I mean, I just, it just <clears throat> that could be a source of resentment. You know, what I'm saying you got people uh, in Nigeria not, not going to school, Liberia, forget about it. You got the president talking about education is not unnecessary. George Weir saying education has destroyed the country. You know, what I'm saying, I mean, when you got the president saying that, you know, what I'm saying and Liberian education is abysmal, <clears throat> you know, it's just a shame. Uh, so it's it's a shame, you know. Uh, yeah, say so yeah. Somebody, Omar Black, would say another functionality reason good as the lobby for the B. Yeah, we need a lobby group. You know, what I'm saying we need a lobby group on the continent. We need people lobbying the BAL ideology. You know, what I'm saying that we need Pan Africanist districts in every country. You know, what I'm saying places of business. I mean, geez, can you be tell me each country? I mean, I mean, you need that one state, but. You be telling me with all the land that undeveloped now, you go to Google Earth, less than five percent of the whole continent is occupied. You mean tell me you can't uh, uh, on, on, on this river right here, you can't build a, a small a community where they got facilities and infrastructure and everything, with the airport and everything that we can't go and and build and uh, trade and do connect business and travel and everything. Where is the damn African vision? Why is it always got to be us all the time? You know what I'm saying? You ever thought about that? Where do, where is the African mind at? Is it everything? The only thing Africans want to do is stick their head up the white man, the Chinese ass, and look out their nose. No one has any goddamn vision, man. Jeez. You know, and then they want to go, 
But we're just equal as you call. No, don't call yourself my equal. And you freaking don't have any goddamn vision. You got a whole continent out there, and you live you live as a refugee uh, in another freaking part of the world. You know what I'm saying? Don't call me yourself my equal if you can't even think on my, on my level. I'm not asking you to do, but freaking think. You know what I'm saying? That's what the, everybody else is lining up. The Chinese and the Asians are lining up and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? It's a worldwide race war going on. <clears throat> this is a global race war. And business, trade, industry, culture, media, propaganda, everything is about race. Oh, said, there you go. When I, there you go. I'm sorry. I got to say it like it is, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I hurt people's feelings when I say stuff like that, but I got to say it like it is. You know, maybe it'll wake you up. Get out of Australia and go back to Nigeria and build something. You know? Yeah. So. Oh, what's up, Colin, man? What we'll do, man? We'll go ahead and, uh, I mean, first of all, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you get the likes up. Uh, the link to the BAIO is in the chat room. Please go and, and sign up if you're serious. If you're serious. Um, uh, you know, let, me, let me ask you a question. So my name is Uhuru Sasa 85. I don't know if this is a troll. You know what I'm saying? He said, how's moving going to solve click, uh, 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 click issues? First of all, uh, how, how do I start that? What kind of question is that? How's moving going to solve the click issues? But, uh, first of all, we're not trying to solve issue we're trying to create a new platform by which black people globally can operate on you're always going to have issues you know what i'm saying but at least your freaking issues are not controlled under somebody else's system you have to create your own build your own system you know what I'm saying if you can't see that then you got a freaking uh uh the, you, then you got freaking mental problems if you can't see that africans do not ship anything outside of africa themselves you got a freaking problem if you see you don't have a rail line connecting one city for, from one country to another, you got a freaking problem. You know what I'm saying? If you see that you can't fly from Ghana to Nigeria within fucking up with a month span of time, there's something prop, there's something prop, there's a problem. You know what I'm saying? So, so therefore, so get your head out your ass. Yes, we have a global problem that's result, the end result of slavery. We got all millions of black people in America that are disenfranchised from the African continent and living under a system of white supremacy in America. You got Africans that have no trade. Asian countries, they have trillions of dollars of the trade flowing through Asian ports and everything every year. Africa has nothing going on with its, between itself. Africa has $100 billion a year net loss in trade and everything like that because it produces nothing. So you want to ask me again what the freaking problem is? Don't call yourself a huru and everything like that if you don't freaking mean it. Take that freaking flag off and uh, the huru name off. You're gonna freaking and you're gonna buck dance and coon. So. Well, with that being said, brother, we'll go ahead and uh, close out. We'll go ahead right, and uh, whatever, whatever you have to say to. Yeah, B A I O C S A B A. Our, our name group is growing. People in there. If you got. Stuff to say, come to the name group. We're growing. We got states. If you got a state, we have groups for each state, each country. You got a state. If you're in uh, whatever country you're in, you can start a BAO chapter. One day, those chapters can grow into meet and greets and everything like that and spread the BAO ideology. What's BAO ideology? Is a, uh, that's what Yvette Cardinal and these fools are fighting. The BAO ideology is spreading. And there's nothing they can do to stop this because it's the truth. It makes sense. It, it, it's nothing we created. It was always there. Let me say this again. You know what I'm saying? The BAIO and the Black African Infrastructure Land Nationhood, right, is not something we came up with. It was already there. It's eternal. It has no beginning. It has no end. It was always the answer. You know what I'm saying? Having a land and infrastructure and nationhood is, a, a, is an answer to our problems. That's not something Kyle and Hope came up with everything. It was always there. And everything you see beside that, that distracts from that, is buck dancing and cooning. We had a lot of buck dancing and cooners that came by, got on the world stage, and misled us and everything. But the main thing is land infrastructure. It's going to happen whether Kyle's here, Hope's here, or the BAL's here. It's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So get used to it. 
And so stay up, join us at our main site. We're not. I thank Brother Dinus for having me on here tonight. Man, anytime. The search for her real rules the best anytime. Big platform. Uh, Mr. Doe said his uh his uh membership uh drive uh on his uh, uh thing went up. Whole uh had a boost on his thing. I don't really use my uh my YouTube channel and I, I'm satisfied with this. I don't want any the headaches of trying to get subscribers and trolls and everything. I just like going on Dinus' show and Hulk show and Dinus uh, Minutes show and doing some blog talk, but I don't really. Get it, uh, have a, a platform. I don't want a platform like this. I like being a guest, you know. But, but thanks for this platform. This platform has really helped the BAO out. The message is spreading, you know, what I'm saying it's spreading like wildfire, it's spreading like a, spreading like fire and burning out of control and whatnot. And soon it's going to go viral and whatnot. It's, it's unstoppable, you know, not something we created, but it was already there. And just like fire is already there, the elements of the earth, all we do is trigger it and bring it out, you know, what I'm saying. The fire is burning. All right, so I'll take care. Y'all take care. Thank you, my brothers and sisters out there. I love you all. Anytime. Thanks for listening in. All right, everybody. Once again, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, make sure you go to the BIO, and then also make sure you go to search for Huru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, Africa Personified on those same platforms. Make sure you go to Africa Personified on Africa. Search for Huru.com, Dynasty.com. Amazon.com. And uh, speaking of Amazon, make sure you guys go and buy Kala's book, okay? Go and support Kala and buy his book, Journey to the Promised Land, Voyage of the Bark Azor on uh, on Amazon. Make sure you go buy the book. So go you will enjoy it. You will enjoy it. You, well, let me say one more last thing. If you want to escape from America for um, how many days? Uh, it'll take you to read that book about well, three or four days. Uh, that book is why read. Some people read it in one day. Can you read the book in one day, Dinus? Uh, the book. Okay, if you can read the book, well, you're gonna escape to another time and place. That's what I try to do. When I write novels, I read novels. I like an escape. I don't like anything dealing with my current reality. With a lot of black authors, don't know how to do that. You know what I'm saying? It's an escape. You're in the 19th century, and you're talking. You're 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 in South Carolina, and you're sailing to Liberia. And of the way Liberia is described in detail, and then at the end of the book, you're in you're in modern Liberia, 1978, and it's a reflection of the whole thing. So you start in 1878, in the last part of the chapter, the children of God. You're uh, I mean, I'll tell you what the children of God. The children of God are the Africans who survived the Mafa and returned to Africa. That's the children of God. You know, so the children of God are the the Liberians and the Africans who who were enslaved. But they managed to make it back to the African continent. That's what the definition of the children of God means. Okay, so uh, so read the book. You'll love it. You'll say you'll escape for two hours and everything, and you'll become renewed in this idea of, you know, something. Yes, we need a nation around. We need to make that journey to the promised land. You know what I'm saying? We need to cross the ocean again. You know, and with that, Dinah, thank you for having me. Y'all, good night. All right, no problem. All right, everybody. Till next time, which will be tomorrow. Peace.